Welcome along guys. Well today I'm riding a bike I've been itching to try since it was first released. I wanted to get on the launch of this bike, didn't happen. I wanted to go to KTM UK and help run them in for sort of an early try on the bikes, didn't happen. Well I finally got my hands on the KTM 790 Duke. Woohoo! Let me get my mitts on it. Yeah, yeah. 800cc parallel twin, KTM's first ever parallel twin. Um, and I've had this bike about a week. So I've been riding this round for a week and a bit. I've been out on fast rides with it, I've been cruising on it. And I'm actually, overall, absolutely loving the thing. Let's talk about ergonomics first of all. I've actually got the 1290 Super Duke, as the regular subscribers will know. And the feel of this bike, the riding position, is very, very similar to what the Super Duke's like. You're sort of cantered forward a little bit. Very sort of Super Moto style to the position. It encourages you to use the rear brake and sort of back it into corners. Comfort wise, even with the standard seat, it's actually more comfortable than the 1290 Super Duke with the comfort seat option. I've been out three or four hours on this in absolutely no discomfort whatsoever. This thing has everything from an electronic side. It even has launch control, lean sensitive ABS, lean sensitive traction control. It even has the blipper and quick shifter, as I mentioned, which we'll come on to in a minute how that works, but it's got all of that standard. If you've got the 1290R Super Duke, you don't get that standard on that bike. You've got to pay extra. So they've really thrown everything, everything, including the kitchen sink. <laughs> An electronics package on this there's not a bike out there which has a better electronics package than this thing it's absolutely unbelievable it even has the supermoto mode as standard when normally on the super g you have to add, add a dongle to enable supermoto mode whereby it turns off the abs to the rear wheel only that's even accessible via the menu just out the box so the electronics included are simply incredible and the beauty of it is you can turn off anti-wheelie and leave your traction control on which is something you cannot do on the likes of the MT-09 for example you have to turn everything off on that so that gorgeous motor th this thing sounds delicious I've actually got an external recorder in my backpack just to so get a a feel of the sound that this thing makes for the standard exhaust on it it pops crackles it sounds absolutely gorgeous i can only imagine <laughs> how good it would sound with a proper exhaust system a full exhaust system or even just an ncan it would sound absolutely gorgeous the motor is very very torquey 105 brake horsepower and 88 newton meters of torque so it, it delivers good power, good torque, very, very similar power and torque to the MT-09. This new parallel twin is superb, great power, great torque, sounds fantastic. It's a very compact unit and it, and it makes the bike, the wet weight, the dry weight, sorry, of this bike is 174 kilos. It's around 186 kilos wet, something like that. So again, very comparable to the MT-09 which I think is just a couple of kilos heavier. There's been so many good reviews of this bike online. Before I had it I thought I was a little bit sceptical. It really can't be as good as the press is making it out to be. There must be something wrong with it somewhere. <laughs> and then it's not perfect. There is a couple of things which can be improved upon. Firstly, the suspension is completely non-adjustable. The rear shock has a couple of, as a clicker, where you can adjust around between 10 different preload levels. The front has nothing. And as though people have said, the suspension is very, very well set up. I, I, I find it a little bit harsh. Over bumps, it can jar you quite a lot. It could be because I'm a larger rider, but it, it seems to be very, very heavy on the rebound. So when you hit a bump, it, it rebounds the suspension very aggressively. So I think, to be perfectly honest, the suspension could do 
probably with revalving revalve it and it'll probably transform it but as standard it's a little bit it's a little bit harsh the bump management it's not the best <laughs> but they call this bike the scalpel and it really is very precise the steering is absolutely gorgeous it goes where you point it and delivers amazing levels of confidence despite and this is the second bugbear the tyres not being particularly good the standard tyres again is where, the, where KTM have cut a bit of cost and they've had a few moments on these tyres it's a shame a bike they're selling as the scalpel comes with budget suspension and, and, and budget tyres quick shifter blipper quick shifter is very smooth the blipper can be a little bit clunky at times it's good when you're on the boil at higher revs but low down it can be it doesn't want to go down into there we go it can be a little bit clunky down the box the, the gearbox is actually very very nice it's very easy to find neutral it's a very precise change but it is a little you have to be quite firm with the with the lever certainly on downshifts if it were mine i think i would use the clutch apart from when you're absolutely on the boil on the downshifts upshifts are fine with all those electronic goodies it comes with several different throttle maps but they all they're a little bit snatchy unfortunately this bike suffers with the old euro 4 snatchiness not as much as the MT range, not as bad as the Yamaha's, but a little bit snatchy. If it were mine, and I have considered actually buying one of these, it's that good. If it were mine, it would be an exhaust, a remap, power commander, suspension revalve, new tyres. Oh, and I think it would be an absolutely fantastic, fantastic bike. Let's take it on something a little bit more rural. Oh, listen to that exhaust. Standard. And it sounds that good. The engine has the old cross plane, cross plane firing order. Like the MT range. Which I think is why it delivers such a delicious exhaust note. front will come up <laughs> on the power no problem at all it also does the annoying KTM thing of flashing the the going to light and day mode on the instrumentation on the TFT more often than the if I just go in a bit of shade it'll probably just swap back to night mode it's too sensitive it needs to be dialed back a bit you do not need it swapping in and out like that it's a little bit annoying Just a shame that suspension. Oh, like that. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that's my nuts gone. <laughs> oh, it's a bit of a plum basher. It is a bit of a plum basher. Let's pull over actually, and let's just have a. Let's just give you a quick walk around of it while we're here. While my testicles recover. <laughs> so here it is. The 790. I know when this bike first came out the prototype everyone went bananas it looked so so tasty the prototype of this and then ktm came out with the production pictures and everyone felt disappointed they seem to have lost something between the prototype and the production one and i think it mainly is due to the exhaust system the prototype had this gorgeous under seat exhaust which was probably never going to stay on the production bike it's just too hard to produce that and to you know to the heat produced from it it wasn't really practical so they've got this thing which comes out here like a banana <laughs> that's the best way to describe it it's not particularly attractive um there are you know aftermarket companies producing stuff which looks better but the whole back of the bike 
is has a bit of an issue stock the front i think looks lovely the headlight looks lovely the mudguard design i'm a big fan of the front end i'm a big fan of the look of the motor looks amazing i'm a fan of this you know this this subframe this is actually part of the subframe it's metal and the airbox is, is in here i'm a big fan of that it's just this piece here is a problem but there is companies making a, an aftermarket tail which will lose all that and there's a new back light which sits back here what i love about it is the fit and finish of the bike everything it, it, it it's not it doesn't have the fit and finish of a bike which costs eight and a half thousand pound everything about it the plastics are good quality the engine just looks delicious all of the cable management is really really nice and I love the way KTM sort of powder coat their engines and they just really wear very, very nicely, those powder coated engines. It's got a nice attractive swinging arm. It's, it's just no areas where you look at it and go, you know what, that is a bit cheap. It, it just doesn't have that at all. It's even got illuminated switch gear, <laughs> illuminated switch gear, which is, you know, it's unheard of. KTM branded calipers, which the front's a bit wooden, but you know, it's certainly not at Brembo M50 standards, but they're not bad. The rear is good. The rear is very good. If I bought one of these, I think the first thing I would do would be to change the rubber. Change the rubber, get the suspension revalved, and I think it would be transformed. TFT, it looks almost identical to the 1290 TFT. The layout's nice. Very easy to navigate through the menu system. Very, very easy. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a well thought out display. It's also got the, the traction control and the motor slip, the MSR, which is what's on the Super Duty. The MSR is very, very good. When, you, when you're in higher revs and you knock the bike down, it's obviously got a slipper clutch on this, but the MSR stops it even further from juddering, you know, from, from the engine braking, locking the rear wheel up. It puts a little bit of power onto the rear wheel as you knock it down. So it's really, really smooth on downshifts. It's something that the, uh, as I say, that the, the 1290R has, but it's also on this. Track mode. If we go into track mode, you can turn off the anti-wheelie. You can, it's got launch control. You can turn the launch control on. There's separate track related uh, throttle maps. The street is probably the best, the track. Let's try the track mode when we go off. But here we have our slips. If I go up and down on the buttons here, that adjusts how much traction controls it. So one is minimal slip. So you should let it slip and slide a little bit, but keep you in check. Or you can have it up to nine. So there's nine way adjustable traction control. I like to leave it loose, but about two. Despite its flaws, I love it. Sounds good, doesn't it? How good does that sound? So I've settled for using it in track mode all the time. Oh, there goes my back again. And my nuts. Oh, that suspension. Well, I've tested everything else on this bike and I did say this was going to be everything you needed to know about the 790 Duke. So, one thing left to do, let us test out the launch control. Launch control from the menu, launch control on. Let's go back out. I guess you put it in gear. Launch control level three. Hold the revs open. Hell yeah! Wow! <laughs> That's a good system. That is a good system. Oh, and it's wet. I've upped the difficulty level by throwing wet loads into the equation. That worked really well. Traction control was stopping it spinning on the wet and I pulled away. No real sign of any wheelie, so I was keeping that under control. Yeah, that's a definite thumbs up for the launch control. The fuel light has come on now, which is, is, is another good point. The fuel consumption on this is very, very good. It's only got a 14 litre fuel tank, but you can still do 130 miles on it. 
it's another reason that the, these middleweight bikes sort of shine over this big brother like the Super Duke, which is just so thirsty in comparison. I don't think you're getting that much more fun for the money it's costing you. I, I, I'd argue whether you're even having any more fun because this is just excellent. Such a good fun sized bike. I think these middleweight bikes just make Oh, I don't know what happened there. That's very strange. <laughs> As I was saying, I think these middleweight bikes just make so much more sense on the road. And they're epic, epic fun. So is this bike worth eight and a half thousand pounds? Yes, absolutely is. It's a bargain <laughs> for eight and a half thousand pounds. Let's be honest, it's not perfect. A few little flaws, suspension, snatchy throttle, cheap tyres. I, I guess you could say the brakes aren't the best either, but you know, for that price bracket, it's a hell of a bike with a fantastic potential with a bit of modifying. 